Let's talk some Dragon Ball Z. Hello everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking some Dragon Ball Z. Why is that, Patrick? Why are we talking some Dragon Ball Z? Well, just like with my Pokemon video that I made several months ago, I believe it would have been. But this is the exact opposite of that. When it came to the Pokemon anime video that I made, it was more about why I used to love it, but not anymore. This is the exact opposite. As a matter of fact, I still enjoy Dragon Ball Z even as an adult. Now being dubbed as Dragon Ball Super. With this right here. I am still uh, getting ready to collect most of Dragon Ball Super. This is just the ending of the series. I'm going to eventually, one day, start collecting the Dragon Ball Super anime. Because honestly, I enjoyed most of the Dragon Ball Super anime. You see, unlike, you see, unlike, you see, unlike Pokemon... Dragon Ball keeps me hooked. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't make me hate the show. It doesn't make me go... It doesn't make me roll my eyes. Sure, there are some things in the show that, you know, you could really be all like, yeah, okay, that's not very good. I'm um, now... I thought about this a while ago. I thought of a potential, maybe, reviewing... The old episodes of Dragon Ball Z, like going through all the you know, all the seasons again, and you know, giving my thoughts on Dragon Ball Z at the time. But I decided to turn it into this little small video where I gave my thoughts and opinions on Dragon Ball Z, the entire Dragon Ball Z anime, and even slightly mentioned Dragon Ball Super because I watched the Super anime. I did do reviews. Of the super anime, but not every episode. I didn't even review when it started. Like, I only started reviewing super, like, halfway through the Tournament of Power. And even then, I didn't review every episode. Because I would either miss a few episodes because of either university or being busy. So, I decided to turn... So, this little video here is me discussing why I still love Dragon Ball Z... And briefly doing some small reviews, like little small reviews about each season and how I felt about Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super and all of their sagas. So, first things first, we're going to be beginning with the Dragon Ball Z Season 1, which was the Saiyan Saga. Now, I never watched Dragon Ball when Goku was a kid. I never really watched that, and some... Some people may have enjoyed it, but I remember briefly trying to watch it. It just, to me, it just wasn't for me. I actually preferred just watching from Z because, you know, far more enjoyable. And I think that's probably why I never really enjoyed Dragon Ball, because I never really watched Dragon Ball. I was more of a Z guy. But either way, Season 1 of Dragon Ball Z began after... After Goku defeated King Piccolo, but you guys probably know all this. But, as I said, it's just going to be a brief review. It's not going to be me talking about every, everything by episode. But the main things about Season 1 was Goku had a brother named Raditz. He was revealed to be a Saiyan, not a human man with a tail. And his son was a half Saiyan, Gohan. And, and this is where we met Vegeta for the very first time, and Nappa, and... Raditz obviously dies, Nappa clearly dies, and Vegeta becomes Goku's main rival. That's more of the things about Season 1. It was more the Saiyan Saga. I felt this was the weakest saga. If you go by, if you if you watch all the sagas in a row, like I've done that so many times before, there's been so many times where I've actually marathoned the entire Dragon Ball Z from Seasons 1 all the way to Season 9. And, and whenever I go through them all season by season... I'm like, man, Saiyan Saga is the weakest saga of them all. Because Disc 1 
has most of the Raditz fights. Discs 2 and 3 is mainly filler of Gohan in a woods by himself and Goku training with King Kai. And then discs 4 and 5 has the battles with Nappa and Raditz. And 6 is basically filler all the way to when we get to Planet Namek. I figured that was the weakest one. And then the Namek saga started with a whole bunch of filler before they got to Namek. So, that was one of the main problems with Dragon Ball Z. There was so there was actually a lot of filler and there was like a lot of stuff that you could And I get and I get you need filler. Super had some filler, but it didn't they didn't over, it, it wasn't it didn't overstay its welcome the filler in Dragon Ball Super, in my opinion. So then we move on to Season 2. Season 2 was basically the first half of the Namek Saga with Zabon, Dodoria, and the Ginyu Force. That was basically the first half of Season 2, and well, the first half, well, sorry, the first half of the Planet Namek Saga. And basically, the second half of the Namek Saga was basically the Freezer Saga. So season three is is technically called the Freezer Saga, but it's technically the Namek Saga, but through Freezer. So season two, that's what season two was. Was basically the first half of Namek with Zabon, Dodoria, and the Ginyu Force. I actually kind of like the Ginyu Force, to be completely honest. Like they're obviously very frightening when you're when as a kid, but honestly, they're probably the first villains I totally did not mind. And then Frieza, we all we all know how iconic. <laughs> we all know how iconic Frieza is. He's like the most iconic villain of all of Dragon Ball. He comes back more times than anybody. He's like friggin. He's like uh, I can't really th I didn't really, couldn't really think of anyone. He he just comes back so much. And Season 3 is very iconic for many reasons. It's the Freezer Saga, and it's also the first time we see Goku turn, turn Super Saiyan. Throughout all of Season 2, Vegeta just hints about Goku being a Super Saiyan. Season 4 is also got some filler. It has Garlic Jr. I don't, I don't really like the Garlic Jr. stuff. I never really liked Garlic Jr. I always skipped over his little season, even though I did watch it sometimes, but eh, never really, never really liked it. Frieza made a brief comeback, then got sliced into pieces by Trunks, and season four is more of the first half, or the first quarter, of the Android Saga, because from seasons four, five, and six was more about the Androids. Well, five and six was more about Cell, but... It's still technically the Androids. So Season 4 began the Android Saga with Androids 20, 19, and the introductions to 17 and 18. Season 5 was more about Cell, but it also had the Androids as well, 17, 18, and 16. And obviously Season 6 is still about Cell and the Cell games. I enjoy... The Cell Saga was always one of my favourites. I know a lot of people say the Freezer Saga will always be their favourite because, you know, it's Freezer. But I've always liked Cell. I've always liked Cell. I always thought he was that perfect villain to overcome. I always liked Cell more, in my opinion. And then Season 7 was basically all filler. It was just basically a whole, was a whole bunch of filler. Gohan being a teenager falling in love with Videl, and then the whole tournament started. And then, that's basically so that's basically Season 7, not a whole lot to talk about. And then Seasons 8 and 9 was the Margin Buu Saga. A lot of people say that the Margin Buu Saga was the weakest saga, because they felt like that's when they were really running out of ideas. I don't hate... The Margin Buu Saga, but I see a lot of people's point of views when it says that it's one of the weakest. I still consider the Saiyan Saga the weakest saga, but at least the Buu Saga, I can still go back and watch it. The Saiyan Saga, I don't really go back and watch it. If I ever watch Dragon Ball Z, I just skip Season 1, and I just go either straight to Season 2 or Season 3. I never watch season one. 
I always consider that the worst one and the most boring. So, I only ever watch it if I'm really bored. If I'm really, really bored. And I'll just, just watch the Raditz stuff, then skip most of the filler stuff, and then just watch the Nappa, Vegeta, and Goku stuff. And then that's, then, then that's just really all I watch of Season 1. I don't watch all of it. But the other seasons I watch, and Season 4 is another one of those ones I skip most of. Like, I skip the Garlic Jr. stuff and just watch the Android stuff. So, in Season 7, I partially mostly skip over that. Just, I po mostly skip over Season 7. So, yeah. That, so, yeah. That's the thing. Of, that's the thing. That's the thing about me when it came to Dragon Ball. I more want to watch the interesting and good stuff. I don't really care for all the boring stuff. So, and as for Dragon Ball Super, I guess I'll briefly talk about Super here. Super, the first two seasons of Super was more uh, was more carbon copies of the movies, Battle of Gods and Resurrections of F. But I felt like the season, but I felt like the the anime versions were done a lot better. Especially with the Freezer Saga where they actually brought back Captain Ginyu briefly before he got obliterated by Vegeta. So many people consider those boring because obviously we've seen them in the movies outside of the outside of the small introduction, the small return of Captain Ginyu. And then so then then Super got better with the Universe 6 tournament where we saw a whole bunch of new characters like Kaba, Hit, and then after the Universe Six stuff, we had a small filler arc, which I don't really talk about that. I consider that pretty lame. And then, and then the, and, but the main thing people talk about is the Zamasu arc, the Goku Black storyline. I consider that the saving grace for Super. I love the Goku Black storyline, the Goku Black stuff, and Zamasu. I really, really like that. If there's any part of Super, if I was to ask someone, sit down and watch Dragon Ball Super, well, if anyone came to me and they said, hey, is Dragon Ball Super any good? And if I said, yeah, there are some good sagas, like the Universe 6 tournament, the Trunks saga with Goku Black and Zamasu, and the Tournament of Power. If I was to have anyone watch this Dragon Ball Super anime, I would just straight recommend the Zamasu Goku Black one. I would just straight up tell you guys, watch the Zamasu Goku Black Trunks saga. That's what I would tell people to watch if you wanted to get into Dragon Ball Super. Or the Tournament of Power, because the Tournament of Power is really fun. Which, that was the next saga after the Trunks one, because they didn't run... Because Dragon Ball Super didn't run for very long. It had like about 132 episodes. And obviously, we know about the Tournament of Power... They hype up a character named Jiren as the most powerful being of the multiverse. The most powerful being that has ever lived. You know, we hear that all the time. Oh, he's more powerful than the God of Destruction, you know. And then Goku gets a new power-up called Ultra Instinct. And, yeah, I... Yeah, the Tournament of Power is really fun. So, yeah, this is more about me showing why I still love the Dragon Ball anime more than I hate it now like I do with Pokemon. So... There you go, guys. There's your little brief video about Dragon Ball Z slash Super, about why I still enjoy it to this day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that thumbs up. Comment your, comment your thoughts down below. If you guys still enjoy the Dragon Ball anime or not, and tell me your favorite sagas. And I will see you all next time. And no, I'm not going to talk about the movies, because I don't really enjoy most of them.